Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog where I show a week in my life as I read the second book of the Grisha trilogy called Siege and Storm, or as I like to call it, Siege and Shitstorm because holy shit, this was a pain in the ass to get through. There won't be any spoilers, so let's just get this shit over with. On Monday, I went to my library to pick up this busted ass book looking like it just came out of a war zone. Don't know why I look so janky, but you know what? It's a free book. Can't complain, story's still the same, which is awful, so I guess the physical condition matches the contents. I read up to 73 pages and got to the part where Mal clucks like a chicken, and at this point I had to put the book down and just pause and reflect for a moment that this is the love interest, you know? Like, this is the guy we're supposed to ship Alina with, and he's over here clucking like a chicken. Weird flex, but okay. Also, when Tamar was asked what time is it, she said that it was coming on three bells. What the fuck does that even mean? How can you tell the time from coming on three bells? Man, I would die in a fantasy story because I wouldn't know anything without my phone as a clock and GPS. On Tuesday, I abandoned my reading responsibilities in an attempt to have a social life. I got free VIP tickets to a Screamo concert, which is the first time I've been to a show like this, and also the first time I saw people moshing. I always heard about moshing, but never saw it in real life till now, and I legit thought these guys were like having some kind of drug attack or something. I mean, they definitely were onto something, but I just didn't know that them literally waving their arms like helicopter propellers and pushing each other around was like a thing. But now I know. And now I'm wondering, do you guys think the Darkling would be into moshing? Cause I kind of feel like he would. Anyway, I tried something new, didn't get home till midnight, so I read zero pages. Yay! I am a great booktuber, I know. On Wednesday, I got some books in the mail so that I could start wrapping presents for people for the holidays. I'll go over most of these books in a future vlog, but let me just talk about the ones that are relevant for this week. So I was part of a white elephant exchange with the women in my workplace, and since most of them were moms in their 30s, I decided to stereotype them and give them historical romance books, because that seemed like they might be safe choices. Or maybe I'm just being sexist, I don't know. I got The Sapphire Widow by Dinah Jeffries and Not Our Kind by Kitty Seldes. Are these books any good? Honestly, I don't know. That's why it's a white elephant exchange. Another book I got was Vicious by B.E. Schwab because I saw that Jackie from Leisure Reads had the paperback edition on her Amazon wishlist. But instead of ordering it from Amazon, I wanted to personalize it a little bit with my own wrapping paper, Christmas card, and this cute book sleeve that I thought would be a nice holiday touch. Cause you know what? Jackie fucking deserves it after sending me the Six of Crows books, okay? I put up a few card options to print out, threw out the ones that looked like trash and just opted for this kinda decent one and wrote her a little note. That night I also wrapped all the gifts while watching Queer Eye because I was hoping their gay vibes would save me from my shitty arts and craft skills and it did not. So yeah. And yes, I did read Siege and Storm this time. I read 70 pages that night, and as I kept reading, I realized I was warming up to this side character named Sturmhond. I just found him endearing, and I usually don't care for cocky male characters, but I guess when the two main characters are devoid of personality, you gotta make do. And then around page 138, I started to suspect his secret, and I was like, holy shit, is this what I think it is? And then lo and behold, bitch, I was fucking right. If you've read the book, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. I was pretty damn hyped, because confirming his secret gave me hope that this story might be interesting after all. It was a very short-lived hope, but it was still nice while it lasted. On Thursday, I went to the post office to drop off Jackie's package. We also had the white elephant exchange, which was super cute. The person who picked out my gift is actually a very avid reader, so thank God for that working out. The office had a Grinch-themed lunch on this day, because we like to do cutesy shit like that. I ate so much of it that I had to retreat to my secret room in the office for napping. And I know some of my coworkers watch my videos, so hello, now you see what I actually do in the office all day. On this day, I read 64 pages. At this point, there's some romantic implications with Alina and another character, and I don't fucking like it, okay? I can deal with love triangles, but if it becomes a love square, that is just way too ridiculous, especially since Alina is the most basic bitch of all. Like, really? Really, bitch? Do not approve. 
On Friday, I got some more reading done while I was waiting for the dentist with a whopping 16 pages. There was a part where Elena was trying to be tough and saying, I don't care if you think I'm a saint or a fool or the Darkling's whore. I'm like, girl, you're definitely two of those things. Speaking of being a hoe, I spent this day looking for a dress to wear at my work holiday party. Last year, I came in dressed as a furry, but this year, I wanted to actually try to look somewhat decent for once in my goddamn life. And as I started putting on dresses, I realized why I don't put in effort to look nice. Because I can't. I tried on all these dresses, did not look good in any of them, so I settled for something that I think the Darkling would be proud of. And it was this black tight-fitting dress with some slits on the side. It's a pretty safe choice because I wear black all the time anyway, but who's the Darkling's whore now, Alina? It's me, that's who it is. My workplace set me up in this room to stay for the night at the party, which was awesome. I love sleeping in beds that aren't mine. That's why I'm the Darkling's whore. The party was at Smithfield Winery, which was a beautiful rustic building. We had an open bar where my friend and I got drunk off of several vodka shots. Then we stuffed our faces with some Italian food that the chef prepared, along with tiramisu and lemon bars. Yum! It was an awesome night. I love getting drunk. I don't know if you knew that, but I do. Uh, however, drinking and partying meant that I got no reading done that day. But you know what? It did make some interesting content the next morning when I filmed my Q&A. I have yet to ever experience a hangover, so I was just drifting by the rest of the day, eating pizza, relaxing, and having homemade hot pot for dinner with my roommate. I read 69 pages that night and I got to the part where Alina was in the Darkling's bedroom and saw that he had a pillow and thought it was good to know that some part of him was still human. Man, you know your standards are low when you think that a boy sleeping on a pillow makes him relatable. She also thought about how the room smelled like him and described it as the crisp edge of a winter wind, bare branches, the smell of absence, the smell of night. What the fuck does that even mean? Tag yourself, I'm the bare branches. So yeah, that's a full week in my life and I barely made it past the halfway point of the book. I'm gonna be honest, I skipped reading it for the next few days because I just wasn't interested. I also stopped vlogging because it was too much work. So I'm just gonna show you a bunch of random clips of pizza that we got at work the next week and the dogs at my office. Look at them, aren't they so cute? It's okay if I don't read as long as I have cute dogs in my vlog, right? Right. I did end up finishing the book, so here are my final thoughts. On page 353, I got so fucking pissed off because this love triangle was becoming a love square. Fucking stop it. Just stop. Why is this a thing? Not only are these kids acting like fucking idiots in the middle of a war, we spend so many pages suffering through their trivial relationship issues. I don't fucking care. I hate it. I don't want to read this shit anymore. But still, I persisted. Alina then writes an imaginary letter where she signs it as Alina Starkov Idiot. Well, at least she knows it, you know? For any of you who decide not to read the series, I'm just going to summarize it for you in this one sentence here. Mal wasn't where he should have been, and I'm perfectly capable of being stupid on my own. That's it. That's literally the Grisha trilogy in a nutshell. This should have been the blurb on the back. And then the last quote I want to share is when Alina says, You know the problem with heroes and saints, Nikolai? They always end up dead. I must be a hero and a saint because this book makes me want to die. In conclusion, I had a good week but a shitty reading experience. I rated the book 2 stars because I just did not care for it at all. There was a short story at the end called The Tailor and it was infinitely more interesting and engaging than the rest of the series ever was. And that's the tea. So there you have it, a week in my life where I suffer through siege and storm. And now we have one more book to go. Pray for me. Hey guys, thanks for watching this vlog if you have made it this far. I just wanted to take some time out to shout out a few booktubers because I'm doing this thing where for every thousand subscribers that I get, I will shout out another booktuber who has less than a thousand subscribers. And to go along with the theme of this vlog, which is that Alina is a dumb bitch who only cares about boys instead of the war going on, 
I will shout out male booktubers specifically. So the first booktuber that I want to shout out is Average Joe Reads. He started about six months ago around the same time as me, and he has been regularly posting fun content ever since then. Most notably, if you are a Harry Potter fan, he does a lot of Wizarding Wednesday videos, which I think are pretty cool. He's also a K-pop fan, so he made a really unique video where he pitted book characters versus K-pop stars against each other. So yeah, he has a lot of unique content. If you are into Harry Potter or K-pop, I would say check him out. Then the second booktuber that I want to shout out is RK Gold. He covers a lot of books as well as some of his writing because he is also an author, and he does a lot of vlogs outside of booktube as well. My favorite video from him so far is the one where his dogs are discussing a series of unfortunate events. It's just really cute and funny, and I think it's a testament to his casual sense of humor. And the last booktuber that I want to shout out is Savarain Novels, who is technically not a dude. They identify as genderqueer, but I just wanted to shout them out anyway. First of all, I think it's great to see more non-binary booktubers and author tubers in the community. But even beside that, they speak so casually and so frankly that I could see myself being friends with them in real life, as well as the other dudes that I mentioned too. My favorite video of Austin so far is the one where they're talking about their first week as an editorial intern. And I don't know, I just think it's interesting to hear someone's experience in the publishing industry. So yeah, those three are pretty cool dudes slash non-binary people. And if you need more people to check out, you can go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel to go over to subscribe to theirs. And that's pretty much it for this vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye.